Hopefully we don't get any water in the van. We're going to the tip. Finally done it, guys. Woo! <laughs> Have a look at this. So we've admitted defeat. This is amazing. This is where we should have been the whole time. Okay. Hey, that's uh, Sasha done for us. That was a beautiful spot. Um, got the boat in again this morning, real early with the boys. No luck though. One tiny little coral trout, not legal at all. Can't believe it. Like beautiful waters around here, and we just can't catch anything. Need to get that sounder going. Yes, I know. I don't have a battery. I, just, <laughs> I didn't have time to get that set up, so that'll be a later job when we get back to a town. But um, what are we going to do now? Heading to Punsen Bay, the track that we said we wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. We'll show you. It's just that one water crossing. Yeah, like, there is quite, but it's also pretty like rotted out in places. So yeah. I just worry about the clearance of the van. But should be. Fine. This is why we got Bertha to see and push her and see what she's capable of. Our caravan, mate. He's <laughs> obviously been paying a lot He's of attention. He's paying a lot of attention. <laughs> Anyway, puns and bay, let's go. What that, mate? Nothing. Okay, so that's the water crossing down there. We drove through it the other day, they reckon hug to the left. So that's what we'll do. We'll snake around, hug to the left. Hopefully we don't get any water in the van. Let's do this. How you feeling? Nervous, so <laughs> nervous. Uh, let's see what happens. Yet. <laughs> I know, mate. It's, it's like I only tapped it a tiny bit. Made it. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Well, there we go. That was nowhere near as bad as we thought. Got through it real easy. Erin may have done a poo. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was all good. I feel like I'm going to spew if anything. Do you really? <laughs> Even after we're through? Yes, because I know it's not the end of it. There's oh, still more coming. That's the deepest water crossing. There's just a bit of rough stuff, but it's she'll not, be all good. I don't know if I'm worried about the water crossings. It's like the real uneven like things that are going to chuck the van I, around. I have to say though, this suspension is amazing through that stuff. Well, we'll see how our coffee machine handles it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Because <laughs> that's what's moving around in there. So. Yeah, our new coffee machine's got a bit of a rub mark on it from shifting around on the floor because we haven't strapped it to a bench yet. But anyway, I'm very happy with that and I am so happy with this suspension. Like, I'm not by any means saying don't get Cruise Master and in independent suspension, but but this suspension for like such a simple setup, hence the name Simplicity Axles, it's just amazing. Loving it. Hunson Bay um, and we've just dropped the van off but this road is um what's the word I'm looking for 
a road. There's definitely a road. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. It is beautiful, like it's real rainforesty, which I wasn't expecting mm. driving up to the tip, to it's be like, honest. You haven't said what we're doing. Oh, we're going to the tip. <laughs> second, <laughs> second time yeah. lucky. We didn't make it last time. But yeah, have a look at this. a little bit deeper than I was expecting on this track. Thought it'd just be a straight track up to the tip. Look at the water. <laughs> bit uh, longer of a walk than you thought? So much longer. Like if you guys said that there was a bit of a walk, but it's like a long way. <laughs> I can see it. Finally done it, guys. Most northern point of the mainland of Australia. It's been on the list for a long time. Woo! <laughs> right, are you happy? Yep. I think so. Okay. Seeker drunk in Australia. <laughs> That's warm worry. Well, that's the tip done. And like a lot of other touristy places that is like a bucket list destination, you get in, you see it, you take your photo, you get out. Yeah. <laughs> Half because it isn't that warm. It's oh, it's it's just humid. I think we've had a little bit of rain on the way up. But think about this, coming. think about this. The people that come here in peak season, surely it's um, Oh, they must just be like hotter. swimming through the air. Yeah, anyway. Well, we did that just in the nick of time. Mm. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually cooking lunch on the back of the car and yeah, started paying down. So we're just going to have a look at, um, it's like an abandoned like resort. resort. Um, we're driving past it and Alan, um, Alan. <laughs> we were driving past it and Adam was telling us a bit of a story about it that um, it used to be really flash. Yeah, we're good, mate. Yeah, it used to be really flash and then um, they handed it back to the locals and it just went to ruins, basically. Yeah. I don't know the actual story, we'll have to look it up. But, um, yeah, we'll see if we can put some more info in, but it's pretty crazy. Adam's grandfather actually stayed here in the 80s, I think he said. Yeah, and he was said blown it was away like really was, nice. Apparently there's a pool and there's all these nice cabins and stuff, but anyway, we'll have a look. So eerie, hey? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. I can't even go any further. <laughs> I have the TV. That's crazy that it's just all abandoned like that. Yeah. Like, just walked away, nothing there. Crazy that there used to be something that you could stay up up here. Would have been cool, really cool at the tip. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm. Anyway, we're gonna head back now and uh, probably relax for the Arvo around the pool. So we're on a day trip today. We are looking for Somerset, which is on the eastern side of the Cape itself. Um, apparently there's a heap of ruins and old buildings around here. We're not too sure where it all is. Anyway, we're pulled into this joint. So this is a campsite. We didn't even really know it was here. It's not a single person to be seen and it's beautiful. Um, we wouldn't get the van down here, but if you're tenting, swagging or um, camp trailer, definitely pull it out here this is beautiful right on the water have a look at this come here Bowie. 
Bowie. Uh -uh. Look at that. That is beautiful. So it's called the Somerset Beach Camp. And just, oh, yeah. mm. that was a big bug. A big bug. <laughs> Hey, and just off the end of it is some um, old graves from the Pearl Divers. So this is Percy Henry Smithhurst, died in 1876. Yeah. Just a bobby. So there's supposed to be like an old well and stuff from the homestead around here but I'm not super keen on like trekking off into the jungle it feels like on my own so <laughs> don't know that we'll be finding that today. Have a look at the ocean here, that is hectic. I have never seen ocean like that. Wow, we'll get out and give you a proper look, but that is insane. It's like a washing machine. Oh no way, look, <laughs> look at that, calm as over there. Swing around, wild. I wonder if it's like where something meets, like oh. where two oceans kind of, or like two currents come kind of yeah, I don't know, because it's like all oh, swirling yeah. around there. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't look like it's going one way or the other, it's just kind of like sitting. Right, it looks like a washing machine. So I'm not sure where this track goes, but <laughs> I think we're going around the headlands to Somerset. Yeah, I think it's called the Five Beaches Loop. Oh yeah, that's right, it is. Oh, it's a little bit hectic in spots. It's a fun little track. Probably wouldn't recommend it with dogs. just cannot get over the amount of rubbish. It must just drift in from uh, Indonesia and those islands. Mm. So every beach that we've pulled onto has looked the same. That's horrible. That was a great. seem to have finished the five loop, five beach loop track um, and just kind of came back onto like the main track. Now we're just looking for somewhere for lunch so we've turned off to try and go to the lake that says there's four wheel drive lake there but it's not looking real promising. We've already like scraped the boat on the top coming through like a real tight like low hanging tree um, and now the track is pretty much underwater. I think we're going to turn around eh? We're trying to get to this lake but it must be just way too full and looks like the whole track's just covered in water we might get ourselves a little bit stuck yeah. remember what i was saying about the boat touching the low hanging branch well <laughs> the strap's gone we've lost the strap we'll get one. thanks mate <laughs> 
The back one's okay. The front one snapped straight off. Yep. Yep. So with a bit of defeat, we're gonna just go back to camp for lunch. <laughs> we're just trying to find somewhere out of the wind, but um, yeah, everything's got hectic tracks down to these last beaches and you just cannot get down there. But um, that was a pretty good little drive around all the headlands and stuff. We didn't really see the ruins we wanted to see because we didn't realize it was them. We didn't stop and get out and search for. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, that's where um, the Jardine ruins. Is it Jardine? Yeah. yeah. It's like settlement town. I think it's like there's a lot of settlement history there. So. Yeah. Settlement. But we'll never know because we didn't stop. <laughs> anyway, we'll cruise on back now. Go back to Punzend. Righto, so this is our site in Punzen Bay. I don't think there's actually any bad sites here. They're no. all pretty equal. You've obviously got your ones like over here that are a little bit more beachfront, yeah. but we're only steps away from it. And that's where the crocs are. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to be a little bit further back. <laughs> yeah. But hey, this place, it's not cheap. No, it's about $95 a night yeah, for powered site. That's because we had to have powered because we didn't really book anything in. It's sort of all we could get. They initially told us we couldn't fit in because we say we've got a 24 foot van. They say we don't cater for that. My advice for anyone with a bigger van, actually measure how long it is from drawbar to tail because we aren't actually longer than a lot of like 22 foot vans or 21 foot vans mm. because you know, your modern off-road vans have got longer drawbars. So. I think we've said before, like our overall length is only a metre longer than what the Gator was. We're nine meters. 18 foot van. That yeah. was eight metres, we're nine metres now. So yeah. yeah, exactly. That's a perfect example. If we rocked up and said we have an 18 foot van, they're like, oh yeah, you can fit anywhere. So you got a 24 foot van? No, nope, can't fit you in at all, but most of these sites can cater for us. But this joint's really good. Like I know it's expensive, but it's remote. It's really nice out here. It's a bit of vibe too. Yeah, like the, you've got the pool area and the bar area. That's and... really cool. Really cool spot. Mm. Well, what a bloody awesome place, eh? Nearly two weeks into our North Queensland trip, we finally got a sunset. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, we actually haven't had a sunset yet. It's been overcast nearly every day, but this is amazing. This is amazing. This is a amazing way to end like the tip journey, hey? Pretty much, like we're not completely done, but our, our mates are going are. home tomorrow. Um, We'll peel off, we'll, we'll still see a couple of places because we just want to do as much as we can while we're up here. But, I don't know, it's pretty special up here, isn't it? It is, it's a different world. Yeah, and like our family are freezing back home right now. Yes. <laughs> and it's 30 degrees here, it's beautiful. I'd almost rather be freezing than like sweating and nah. I don't know if I've mentioned, but my body just does not cope with this humidity and I'm like breaking out in a rash. But... And I, I'm the opposite, my skin's better here. <laughs> yeah, Alex is better in the warm. But, uh, but anyway, we're gonna go back, cook up a bit of dinner and um, yeah, I don't know. Just soak in this last night with our mates at the tip. Yeah, pretty special. So powered sites are just here. Yep. So pretty much. Oh, we went powered, did we? Yeah. Okay. Righto, so we packed up from Punza Bay and we have come to a little town called Yamagico. So it's only five or 10 minutes from Bamaga. It's, everything's real close here. But we've come to a little campground. Uh, what's it called? Alau. Alau Beach Camping. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, amazing. I don't know if you can see out past Erin yet. Well, let's take them outside. Erin's already cracked a beer because it's that good. I'm just having a nice coffee. I haven't got to my beer yet, <laughs> but let's take them outside. 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? Like, that is unreal. This is where we should have been the whole time. I know. <laughs> And that's the hard thing, unless you go scope out every, scope out every campground, mm. you don't know. So, hey, this is one of the benefits of coming uh, early, very early in the season like we are. We've got it to ourselves. There's a yep. couple other people here, but this place apparently just gets packed out once um, like everyone starts coming And you can see up. why. It's like, we were so lucky we got this site with the, the little um, the rope, swing. rope swing down the end there. Oh, that's just stop it. <laughs> absolutely unreal so these beachfront sites here are unpowered little story is we pulled in mm. we paid for a powered site because Erin wanted to run the aircon for quite some time to do editing and even though we've got a good battery system we just can't pump an aircon non-stop yeah so we started setting up on our little uh powered site which was back a bit and uh, we came for a walk before we set everything up, just because we could see the ocean and we just, just saw this yeah. site. And we'd only booked for one night, so we were like, let's stay for two, but go over there yeah. and just like hang and chill for a couple of days. Yeah, because we've been pretty much on the go since we got up here. Yeah. Hanging out with our mates. They've actually gone back now. They've um, they've pretty much run out of their time and they've got to start heading back south. Mm. So unfortunately, they're missing was, out on this. Yeah, it was an epic couple of days with them and I bet they're going to be kicking themselves. They uh, couldn't come here with us, but... Anyway, so we're just going to chill, I yep. think. But I look so unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look perfect. Uh, I'm just waiting for you to flip out the back then. <laughs> Legs up in the air. Uh, how good. What's happened? I can't get out now. All right, I'll help you. No, you don't. I'll hold that. Okay, thank you. That will kind of be some help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as graceful, is it, as you think it'll be? No. Hey, I forgot to mention as well, they have a pool here. So obviously, beautiful water, cannot swim in it, crocodiles, pool though. So that's pretty good. The kids are stoked about that. Hey, Kubi. Hey, hey. You happy boy, you get to stretch your legs. Alright, morning everyone. Hey, uh, we're having our down day. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it out the back there. I'll get up and I'll show you. I won't be so lazy and just stay sitting down. Our view, she's a little bit overcast. Don't mind all the dirt and dust. That rear window just gets pelted with the dust behind the van. But um, yeah, she's an overcast day. She is. Um, we always said we we're going to have a down day though. Yeah. So we actually are. Both kids aren't feeling the best, and I'd say it's just because we've been we've been on the move. We've been non-stop since we hit the road almost two weeks ago. Mm. Every day has been doing stuff, so we'll make the most of this weather. Yeah, we may as well. I'm just going to spend the day editing, try and get ahead, like I've been saying for the last year and a half. <laughs> Still hasn't happened, but anyways, yeah, <laughs> working on it. Uh, anyway. Um, I don't know how long I actually will sit still for. I'll try. You haven't sat still at all. <laughs> it's been out and doing stuff to the van. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens today. Uh, might do a bit of a cook up later. Not might, I've pulled the meat out already. Have a look at this. Look at that absolute monster. That is a T-bone. Meat at Billy's. I can't wait to cook that. Going to have to get some tips from Brad on how to do it, I think. Yeah, he already did, he told He's me. He's given us a rundown, yeah. all good, because we don't want to butcher that one. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see what the day holds for us.
Not much, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I can't sit still enough for long enough. So doing some maintenance on the van. Oh, have a look at this. So my grey water tank set up. It's been smashed to pieces by the corrugations or the rocks rather, or the rocks flinging up from the car because we don't have the stone stomper. We don't have rock tamers. We don't have anything. We're just running it as is. So this tap under here, that's the one I turn open to let the water into the grey water tank. The tap itself smashed right off, so I can't even open that. And then this other one that was sitting on the outside, sitting in there, it's been smashed underneath. So she's loose as, oh, and the cam lock end came loose as well. So I'm just gonna use a bit of silicon. I'm gonna put this all back together best I can for now. And um, chuck some screws in it or something. And I'm just gonna have to, um, gonna have to change it when we get home and put like a checker plate cover or guard or it's just in a bad spot. Oh, the other thing that happened too, I actually fixed this yesterday. We had a link for our water tank. This one here. And all it was was this tap that was already in the water tank when we um, bought it. That was just all loose. The silicon wasn't holding anymore. So just pulled that out along with the back one and just resealed it all up because we're hooked up to water here. So I um, emptied the last of what was in the tanks. Hopefully that seals up all good and we can fill them back up. Righto, so let's talk about this beautiful steak that we got here. This is from the guys at Meat at Billy's. Erin, get a little close up of that. So this is a Florentine T-bone steak. I don't know if I'm saying Florentine right. If it's Florentine, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how to cook it properly, but I did speak to my mate Brad from Meat at Billy's. Gave me a bit of advice. So I'm gonna sort of slow cook it and sit it up through um, the bone, apparently it cooks through. But anyway, so Meat at Billy's gave us a heap of meat before we left um, to sort of try out their whole range. Now, they've given us a discount code, we'll pop that in below, um, and they deliver around Brisbane. So they're a Brisbane-based company. Anyway, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. We've got this jackalope rub. We showed you that at another time. Um, that's available through Meat at Billy's as well, and it's delicious, eh, Aaron? Like, so good. So we're going to cover it in that. Um, I've got some potatoes in foil already on the Weber. They're going to just um, slowly cook like a jacket potato, and then um, we'll get this steak on. And I don't know, we're, we're sort of out of veg, aren't we? Yeah, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> we're real wise. low. Yeah, being up the cape here, um, we're a bit limited. But anyway, um, what I'm going to use too is i got this meat probe. I've had it for a while. Um, I don't even know what brand it is, Erin. Cooler bar. Um, mm -hmm. It works quite well. Um, I would like one of those Bluetooth ones that go into your steak and then you leave it in there while it cooks. Hint, hint, Erin. <laughs> Father's Day. Father's Day. It's birthday, not coming up, but like okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that's about it. So we'll get it on the Barbie. We'll see how she goes. Look at that, Aaron. That is dead set. The biggest T-bone I've ever seen in my life. That is a chunk of meat. <laughs> These oil sprayers too. Um, Kmart, I think. Decor, I think you can get them for Bunnings as well. They are the best for cooking on your Weber or Ziggy or whatever, any barbecue. So good. Even just a fry pan, even? Yeah. <laughs> Any, any cooking, look good. I'm not going to discriminate on any kind of cooking. <laughs> All right, there we go. I think that is ready. I'm scared. Why? I don't want to wreck this. <laughs> Such a good steak. I do not want to ruin it. Let's get it on. Let's uh, get it on. <laughs> oh, just me and the steak. If you could leave, please, Eric. <laughs> I hope this is actually the lid's tall enough to, um, 
not hit the stake. So, bone down, apparently sends the heat up through the T-bone and it cooks it from the inside for a bit. Then I'll um, sit this down on the ground. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Yes, just fits. Cut down the bone. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I'm excited and nervous. <laughs> I'm nerve sided. You're always nerve sided. <laughs> like mum is. Yeah. Is it good? It looks pretty good. That looks amazing. Well done, team. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked someone, out. Someone didn't want a high five then. Who gets the first piece? Me. Me. Oh. How about both your beers at the same time? Oh, yeah. Go. <laughs> How's your steak cooked, Toby? Mm-hmm. <laughs>